forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos. This block is Storm at Sea and I need to fix this. It is a 21 inch finished, this version of the block. And we're going to use the Tri-Rex tool for this version. And we'll talk about what other tools you can use. But that's what I'm going to use in my demo. Here is the diagram. And it's actually four Storm at Sea blocks, but I wanted to show you how you could get different looks if you put the blocks together and then when you colored them differently. I'm going to include a coloring diagram for you for this. This finishes at 21 inches. As I said before, the, we're going to use the Tri-Rec tool, but you can use any tool designed to make a triangle and square unit. I think there's one, they call them Peaky and Spike, and another one calls them a V block, V like a Victor block. So you can use those tools. Uh, you need a three inch finished square for that. And then I have, we have some AccuQuilt dies. I have separated out the cutting by fabric color. So here's the blue fabric, which is the main fabric, then red and yellow, and then the background fabric. And we'll go over those. For the AccuQuilt dies, AccuQuilt does make a storm at sea bob, and bob means block on board. They have all of the pieces, all the shapes you need to make this block, and it, I believe it makes the same size a nine inch finished block, but you can use the nine inch finished block makes this portion up here, and you can just simply use the cutters to make the other pieces. If you don't have the storm at sea block on board, and there'll be a link in the description below the video, here are the dies that you need to make the other patches. Okay. And I won't go over all of them, so you can see them here. I want to kind of keep this simple because I want you to see how easy it is to make and what it, what it entails. Before you say, oh, that looks so complicated, it looks hard, I can't do it, there are only three units, these three right here. Two of them, the triangle and square, and the square on point you've done before if you've done some of these blocks. These are repeated a lot. This is probably a new one to you, but this is the square in a square, so it's a square in a square. If you keep adding triangles, you get more squares and squares and squares. So that's what this is. This is a square in a square in a square in a square done the same way. So if you know how to piece this one, you can piece this one. A storm at C block is very simple. It's this unit in the center. And then if you put sashing and cornerstones, then you get the rest of the block. Here's the cornerstone. And we're going to take two of these triangle and square units and put them together like this to make the sashing. And then here are two that I've already sewn together. And if you're using the AccuQuilt block on board, this is what they call their block, and this is nine inches here. If we continue to add cornerstones and sashing, this is what the block looks like. And then more cornerstones here. And you just keep repeating that, and your use of fabric is what gives the design, sometimes the circular design that it does. I wanted to tell you about this unit here. This is called a diamond and rectangle because it's a diamond and a rectangle. And instead of sewing the two pieces together, this diamond piece will be one piece and then you simply sew the four corners on. That's a different ruler and I didn't want to get into it today, but if you can look and see how to make this unit, with that diamond in rectangle ruler, then you just need to have a three inch by six inch finished unit for that. But we're going to sew the two triangle and squares together to get the same look. So let's put this back up and we'll start with the piecing. And the instructions, there are only five steps in the instructions. Step one, we take the A and the F patches and we make the following units. And these are the square on point units. We'll make one of this one and this goes in the center 
and we'll make 12 of the other ones like this. And how you do that, you put this, and then you'll put your triangles around it. This is the one that's repeated in the block, and the other one that is the center of the block, it's a different color, is this one. We, instead of putting the blue around, we put the white around. Stay tuned for this short tutorial that shows you how to do this. Using rotary cutting patches. You have your four half square triangles that go on the corners and your large square in the center that's set on point. I like to start by piecing opposite sides first. And what I do is flip this over Center the square on the triangle, matching these edges, the long edge of the triangle, and one side of the square. You want to see if these triangles on over here on the right and here on the left are roughly the same size. You just kind of eyeball it. So there, I'm going to go with that. Stitch a quarter inch from this edge, a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down. Do this side as well. Press your seams open, and if you look, these edges extend here and what I'm going to do now is just trim these off straight in line with the, the side of the square. Put your half square triangle down with the right side facing up and then place this in the center and then check your the size of your triangles overhanging here and what you're going to do here, you will start stitching right here in this V section where this point meets. And this should be a quarter inch from here to the edge of this fabric. Start here, stitch a quarter of an inch all the way to this side and you should come out here at the same part on, on this side. And do that on both sides. And here's what the stitching looks like. And now you're going to press your seams open. And here's the finished unit. Now I'll just trim off these little nubs on the sides. And your unit's finished. Piecing the square on point using AccuQuilt. I like to start by piecing opposite sides first. And you're going to place the half square triangle piece on top. We need to center it. I just kind of eyeball it and I'm looking at this, this little triangle of the bottom fabric poking out here. You can barely see it. It's a little triangle poking out here. And then on the other side, there's a little triangle poking out here. What you want to do is try to get them as close to the same size as possible. So I'm just kind of shifting it a little bit. And you're going to take it to your machine and your quarter of an inch should be right here at this point. So you stitch from this point a quarter of an inch all the way down and you come off at this point. And it's more important that you have the quarter of an inch than if you're exactly on the point. And you'll do that for both sides, this side and then this opposite side. Press your seams open. Now we'll flip it over and do the other two sides. You take your triangle and now you have sides that you can match. You see the triangle has the points cut off. These points are going to line up with what we just sewed. So if you look here, you see they line up with this edge, these two edges, here, here, and across the top. Now you'll stitch a quarter of an inch from that point here all the way down to this other point and do that to both sides. It's really difficult to see the stitching because I used white thread, but you can see it coming out here, this little tag here and over here. If these don't match perfectly, if, if it's like it's not long enough, don't stretch this triangle because you'll just make the unit wonky. Just center it as much as you can and stitch a quarter of an inch. Now we'll just press it open and it will be finished. And there's your finished unit. At some point when you finish your square on point unit, you'll have to sew something else to it. And you want to keep these points nice and sharp. And sometimes you might be matching it to a seam line or a plain piece of fabric or maybe another point. 
and I'm going to show you how to keep these points nice. If you've pressed your seam open, you will see where these three fabrics intersect and form a point right here. That's your point on the back and it's also your point on the front. So you can stitch with this part on top and you'll be able to make sure that your point stays there. I take a pin and put it right there at the point and then pick it up on this back side and in this case I'm going to come down about a quarter of an inch and then put that right in the seam line. That way the point will end up right on the seam line. Put your fabric pieces together and line up the top edges or the edges that you need to line up and make sure your pin is perpendicular, goes straight down into the fabric like that. If you're at an angle like this, your points won't match. So make sure they're straight, perpendicular to the fabric, and then put it into the fabric. When you start sewing, line up these edges here. Start at your quarter of an inch and sew all the way down. And you're going to aim for this point where that pin goes into the fabric. And you'll know that you're matching the point and the seam line on the back. And straighten your bottom edge again and continue stitching a quarter of an inch off. And here's what it's, the stitching looks like if you can barely see it on here with this thread. It goes right across here leaving the point open. You're not stitching over the point. And then if I flip it over, you'll see it's not exactly a quarter of an inch there, but that doesn't matter because what you want is the point to match the seam allowance here. Now just press the seam open and you're finished. You should have 12 of these and one of these. Right now, all of these units should measure three and a half inches both ways. Now we're on to step two. We'll take four of the dark square on point units and we're going to sew our G patches to them. Here is one of our units, square on point, and we sew opposite sides first, press the seams, and sew the other sides and press your seams. And once this is sewn, once you're finished with this, it should measure four and three quarter inches both directions. In our final round, we use patch D and we'll stitch the same way. Stitch the opposite sides first, press the seams, and stitch the remaining sides and press the seams and cut off your nubs. And when you finish this one, it should measure six and a half inches. Now our four main units are ready. Put those to the side. Now we'll go on to step four. We're going to take the B, C, and E patches, make four triangle and square like this, and 20 like this. So these that we make 20, they use the background for the sides, and these where we make the four, we have the yellow for the sides, and these will be the yellow star points in the center block. Stay tuned for a short tutorial that shows you how. To piece the Tri-Rex unit, you turn the piece over like this, and that little notch you cut out, you're going to line up with this edge of the triangle. So you have your notch lining up that edge, and then you have your side lining up with this edge. And we're going to start our stitching here and stitch a quarter inch all the way down. When you stitch it, your stitching should start right at this point here. And this should be a quarter of an inch here. So we've stitched all the way down to the bottom. And then when we open it up and press the seam open, it will look like this. This nub up here you have to cut off because it just gets in the way. If you'll notice down here, there's also a nub that you can cut off and this little angle for the rectangle fabric is sort of cut off a little bit and that's just fine. It'll, be, it'll work out just fine. Now we take our other side, which is this, and we do basically the same thing. We're going to match down here match the, the where you cut off the little blunt edge 
right here along this line and then match the long side and we'll start stitching here if you can see where this V is right at that point should be your quarter of an inch and you start there and stitch a quarter of an inch all the way down and you should come off right here at this where this blunt edge was cut off here are two of them finished this is what it looks like before the nubs are cut off so you have a nub down here and here and then the last one up here so you trim those off and here's what it looks like trimmed off these little curved here sort of curved edges are just fine it doesn't matter it'll be taken up in the seam allowance it's just how it comes out if I'm piecing a lot of these units I will chain piece one side first so I'll if, say if I'm doing a 10 when that whatever I'll do all of this side first press them and then add the next the last side next the dies have cut off all the points here this gives you a way to match up for your piecing so we'll take this first one and flip it over I'm matching this cut and this edge I usually start with this one because it matches better this is at the tip of the triangle so let's match this and then match whatever however it ends up here then I'll start stitching at a quarter of an inch and then finish stitching a quarter of an inch down here now I wanted to zoom way in so you can see this is the bottom part that the part that I matched first and you can see the stitching comes out almost right on that point and up here it doesn't really match any point here so just be sure you have a quarter of an inch when you start stitching now I'll press it open this is pressed open this is the bottom part of the triangle and you see it this white part or the side part comes out just a little bit but that's okay and then the top part comes out they meet together at the edge and that's what you want now we're going to flip this over this is how the piece goes so we'll flip this over now you're going to match the top part of the triangle with this part right here so match that there match the straight edge here and the edges here stitch up here start here with your quarter of an inch going back one step each time you match your side pieces to your triangle do the matching at the tip of the triangle before we had the tip facing this way and we started our matching down here now we have our tip facing this way and we started our matching up here this is even across the top and that point is right at your quarter of an inch and then down here you're off a little bit with your quarter of an inch but that's okay because we did the same thing over here so now we will press the seams open and here is your finished triangle and square unit you see from the tip of this point to the edge is about a quarter of an inch and it's straight across the edge nothing to cut off here and then down here you'll see these little bitty pieces kind of come out a little bit I would trim those off because they might get in the way when you're stitching there's a little bit peeking over here too and you'll see that this white part or the side part comes out it looks like maybe an eighth of an inch comes out on the side but don't worry about that it will be taken up in the seam allowance when you sew this unit to another piece I'm going to add another step here that will make the final piecing much easier take all of these four yellow triangle and square and sew a background triangle and square to each one you'll have four like this and the remaining triangle and squares you should have 16 remaining so sew those together and make eight diamond and rectangles then it'll be easier to put the block together all of our units are done we have our two different kind and we have our start point sashing we have our main blocks and we have our background sashings so we'll just lay the block out I don't know if it's going to fit on here but we'll 
try as good as we can. So let's put this like this, and the star is going in the center. And there's the block that you can't see all of it. I can't zoom out anymore. So now we have five rows. Stitch your units together in the row one, row two, and all the way down to row five. Press your seams open, and then stitch your rows together. And your block is finished. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos.